Well, good morning again, dear saints. Great to see you. We're back again the 24th of July today. Our psalm from Psalm 24. We are in the New Testament book of Acts in chapter 21. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, a couple of weeks ago, dear saints, as we were talking about working through the psalm, there were some parts of the psalm, that is, the direct versicles that we're using here as we start. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. Well, the psalm for today really points out even uh, stronger what we say every morning when we start. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. And that's where the psalmist is for today. This is what the psalmist writes. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. It's really easy for us in a life in Christianity to get so comfortable with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that we forget somewhat the awe, the reverence, the majesty that's due his name. Uh, We've seen it in our culture in the way that we dress when we come to church. It used to be as I was a young boy, Uh, Men were in suit coats, at least, in suits most of the time, women in dresses. Kids were dressed in their best. Uh, Not so much anymore. Church has become a casual place. And as we do that, we have somewhat lost the honor, the reverence due his name. He is the king of glory. He can end everything in a snap of his fingers, and he doesn't. He chooses to continue to let us go on so that all might be saved. He loves us, and his glory is something that we should reflect back to him. Not out of arrogance on his part, out of appreciation on our part. That we might sing just like the psalmist. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, the king of glory, that he may come in. What a great gift it is. Well, the New Testament reading for today in the book of Acts, chapter 21, 15 through 36. After these days, we got ready and went up to Jerusalem, and some of the disciples from Caesarea were with us, bringing us to the house of Manson and Cyprus, an early disciple with whom we should lodge. When we had come to Jerusalem, the brothers received us gladly. On the following day, Paul went in with us to James, and all the elders were present. After greeting them, he related one by one the things that God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified God. And they said to him, You see, brothers, how many thousands there are among the Jews who have believed? They are all zealous for the law, and they have been told about you that you teach the Jews who are among the Gentiles forsake, to forsake Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or walk according to our customs. What then is to be done? They will certainly hear that you have come. Do therefore what we tell you. We have four men under a vow. Take these men and purify yourself among them and pay their and pay their expenses so that they might shave their heads. Thus all will know that there is nothing in what you have said and has been told about you, but that you yourself also live in observance of the law. But as for the Gentiles who have believed, 
We have sent a letter with our judgment that they should abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols and from blood and from what has been strangled and from sexual immorality. Then Paul took the men and the next day he purified himself along with them and went into the temple giving notice when the days of purification would be fulfilled and the offering presented for each one of them. When the seven days were almost completed, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who is teaching everyone everywhere against the people and the law and this place. Moreover, he even brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. For they had previously seen Trophimenus the Ephesians with him in the city, and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. Then all the city was stirred up, and the people ran together. They seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple, and at once the gates were shut. And as they were seeking to kill him, word came to the tribune of the cohort that all Jerusalem was in confusion. He at once took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. And when they saw the tribune and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the tribute came up and arrested him and ordered him to be bound with two chains. He inquired who he they inquired who he was, excuse me, he inquired who he was and what he had done. Some of the crowd were shouting one thing, some another. And as he could not learn the facts because of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought into the barracks. And when he came to the steps, he was actually carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the crowd, for the mob of the people followed, crying out, Away with him! This is the word of the Lord. Well, Paul continues to have struggles wherever he goes. The Gentiles don't trust him because he was a killer of Christians. The Jews don't like him because he is someone who has caused change. And as he comes back now to Jerusalem, he's greeted by the disciples and they love him and they want him to be there. But when he comes in, there is still this sense that Paul is trying to put away all of the old. Not listen to Moses, you don't need the law, you can do this new thing. And that's not what Paul is trying to do. But he is trying to preach the freedom in the gospel of Jesus Christ and that's difficult. We have a tendency to want to stay the way that we are. The old joke is, how many Germans does it take to change a light bulb? And the answer? Change? You see, we don't like change at all. We don't like change in our lives. We don't like change in our churches. We want everything to stay the same. And even though some of the changes are good and promote the gospel... And let us receive the sacraments and hear his word and continue to build us up. Because we haven't done it that way, we have a tendency to want to resist that. It's hard for all of us. It was hard in Paul's day too. Many convincing or trying to convince the people around that Paul was was evil and tearing things down. And Paul continued to show his dedication by by helping these men go into the temple and be purified so that they would see. Paul is not trying to subvert everything, but trying to remain true to what the gospel says. It's difficult in our world today. We don't like change a bit. We want it to stay the same. But dear saints, the only thing that I know that stays the same is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we need to understand that rightly in order for that to be beneficial for us. We can fall into one of two ditches very easily in this. We can fall into the trap of antinomianism. And that's a Greek word meaning not the law or against the law. We could continue to preach and teach that you can do what you want. The law has been fulfilled by Jesus. You don't have to worry about a thing. Well, that's not preaching the law. And that's not what God asks us to do. The law is very clear. It shows our sin. It convicts us. And when it does that, we don't like it. We want to be free and do what we want. So we can't be antinomians. 
We can't throw the law of God out completely. And on the other side of that, sometimes we might not preach the gospel enough. We might continue to preach the law and say you need to do this and this and this because you're not serious about your sin or serious about Christianity. And then we put the whole emphasis of, of keeping the law on you, subtly teaching that your salvation is given to you because of what you done, have done, because of your obedience. That's not right either. Or another trap is we can simply preach the gospel. Jesus loves you. He died on the cross. You're forgiven. Everything is fine. And we never get back to the law again. Either way, we fall into a trap. Where we stay is in the middle. Preaching Christ crucified clearly. Preaching the law which condemns us of our sin. So that we see our need for a Savior. And when we see our need... Hear the gospel, Jesus Christ for you, his death on the cross for you, his resurrection for you. The forgiveness of sins you have comes as a gift from his sinless life to you. We continue to preach and teach that. Well, Paul's life continues to go from bad to worse. As he has been doing these things, now the crowd is, him, the crowd is everyone all stirred up again. And Paul is arrested. And as they are seeking him, they want to take him and they want to do away with him. They want to kill him. So much so that the soldiers grab him. He, they, the crowds are so close that Paul can't even walk. The soldiers pick him up and carry him into the barracks to try to figure out what's going on here. When we look at Paul's life here, if we back up a little bit, and we look down at what's going on, we, ser we clearly see here a model of Christ. Christ came to free the captives. Christ came to uh, declare victory. Christ came to forgive our sins. All of those great things. And what did the crowd do when they saw Jesus beginning to change things? They arrested him. They cried out, away with him, just like we see here with Paul. What we have, if you look, is, a, is an image of what's already happened to Christ. And the same thing is happening with Paul. Anytime we continue to remain in the truth of God's word, people will be offended. Because they either want to stay under the law, or they don't like it at all, or they want just the truth of the gospel, or simply they just want to do away with Christians. That is the world we live in. But the hope and promise that we have is that Jesus has overcome all of the obstacles that the world throws at us. We continue to be faithful to his law and his gospel. And he continues to be faithful in forgiveness of sins and giving us his peace. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, a catechetical review for today as we look at this. We jump back into the Ten Commandments. And when we talk especially about law and gospel, we, we come back to that first commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourselves. That starts with the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. We pray. Father, we thank you that in the midst of all of the difficulties of our world, in the misunderstanding of you and what faith is, that you continue to give your word preached into our ears that we might understand it better and more fully. Protect us, Father. Direct us through your law and your gospel that we may be bold and courageous as we live in this world that others may also hear and receive. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. 
For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thanks for joining me this, this day, dear saints. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. Go in his peace.